What I'm going to go ahead and go over today is reverse latch needle, which is this one. As you can see, it has an open and close latch right here, and that's to catch your braid for when you're doing a hollow core splice, the reverse loop. Okay, and then you have a loop ended needle. <clears throat> Both of them have two very different functions, and I'm going to show you how each of them is used. Um, we've had quite a bit of comments or in questions. A reverse latch loops when we do our final knot at the end of your line so you don't have to tie any more knots. So we're going to show you how we create it and then two, how to use it. And so let's go ahead and get this started. All right, so I've got an 80 wide Avid right here that we've spooled up with 2,500 yards of 130. What I went ahead and did was I did a top shot with 200 pound Jerry Brown hollow core. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this top end to create a loop at the end so he can loop on his leaders without having to tie a knot. So that means he won't be cutting his braid anymore. When I set up this reverse latch loop, I want to ensure that I have enough loop so that way I can open it up, pull my leader through and still close it down, but at the same time, not making my loop too big because as the leader falls, this braid is, is, you can see how supple it is. It's real light and um, as the leader falls, it tends to open up and the swivel will get caught inside. So I need to be able to make sure that the loop stays pretty closed until I need to open it up to get my leader out. I'll explain that further here in a little bit, but what I wanna do is I'll start in about four feet into my line. So from end to here, and I'm sorry, I gotta do it this close, but I start in about four foot in, and that's where I'm going to insert my reverse latch needle, and that's the one with the, the little device right here that opens up, see it? Okay, and I'm gonna head toward my tag end. So, once I insert it, I'm gonna start sending it down range to my tag end, okay? As it starts to fill up the needle with the braid, or I need to insert the braid into the reverse latch, and this is where it'll come into play. So right here, I'm gonna stick it on. Okay, oop, shoot. If that happens, you gotta kinda pull it all the way through. Let's try this again. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to insert my needle. And I'm going to send it toward my tag end. And as it fills up, I need to insert my braid in here. As you can tell, I'm back into my yellow line because I only did a short top shot on this one. I'm gonna close the little latch right there and I'm gonna start sending my braid over it. Okay, so as it, now it's, it's sliding over, I'm, I can keep moving further down on my tag end side over here. And I'm gonna keep feeding my braid over it. As I'm feeding it through, I'll get to where I have about a foot left Got about a foot left of my, my tag in. At that point, I'm gonna exit the braid and still feed it all the way through. Still sliding it all nice and easy over this. The one thing I don't want to happen has just happened. It caught the, okay. Uh, dang it.
once I've pulled it through, I'm going to go ahead and detach my reverse latch from the braid. You don't want to pull the braid all the way through because, as you can tell, this is a thin piece of metal that you will break it off if you keep trying to put a lot of pressure on it. So, once I've got my loop end through, I'm going to go ahead and slide all my excess braid off there. <clears throat> I'm going to slide all my excess braid toward the reel, okay? Now, at that same time, I want to make this loop small, so when I'm doing that, the loop that I have created, because I towed the line back in on itself, I want to get rid of that first. So slowly you're going to work all the braid, the over braid that you've pulled over all of it toward that loop. Okay, as you can tell, I'm doing it correctly because my loop is getting smaller. Take the braid that is my top layer around all of this. And what it'll start to do is it'll start to invert itself and go back in through my loop. Okay. And I'm sorry I don't have the correct terminology for all of this. They really didn't develop those proper terms and stuff. So I'm describing it the best way I can. And so again, like I said, I'm gonna just keep pulling this braid over it and sending it in. This is going to take a little finessing because you're towing two parts of the braid through the hollow core. Oh wow, how did I do that? Okay, all right, so now that I've inverted my loop, you'll see it start to smooth out as it is done here. The inside of the braid is now flipped inside out. And on the very end, you'll start to see it disappear okay that means my overbraid is now inside out okay at the very end I have a big loop that I definitely don't want okay so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna grab the braid that's wrapped around it that's my outer core and I'm gonna slide the outer core down to make my loop smaller okay and you'll see it start to suck up over here. See how the loop's getting smaller now? And you just work it down nice and easy.
So now since this is a big rig, I usually like to make it about four to six inches where I'll leave the loop open. Once I got that set, now I'm gonna work backwards again. This is kind of the tricky part. You're gonna work this not forward and backwards, forward and backwards a few times till you get it right. Once you got your loop set, now what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna keep tension on my outer core and pull it on both lines. And you see all this outer core excess? I wanna smooth that out so that way it could start tightening up this finger trap effect. Once I've got to the end and I got my tag line that I still need to deal with and my main line. My main line is the yellow line. And that's kind of the reason why I was doing it in two different colors as well, because now you can see exactly what's happening. So the yellow line's inside my white line. So the yellow line is my inner core and my outer core is the white line. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the loop ended needle, which is this one, and I'm gonna insert my braid. I'm gonna insert my tag end here okay so it'll hold it for me and then I'm gonna insert my needle into my main line okay so now we've got got it inserted and I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the same thing pulling my braid over the needle So I know I've got enough on the needle to cover my tag end once I pull it through. So here we go. I'm going to insert my braid into the needle again. I'm going to pull my outer core braid over my loop, my loop ended right there. And I'm going to keep sliding the braid over. And I'm going to keep doing this until I can hide that whole inner core within this line. Now I'm gonna exit the braid pretty much anywhere and I'm gonna pull my loop end out and again same thing be careful loop and trying to pull the needle with too much pressure because you can actually pull this wire system out of there it's happened to us before so once I get to this part if I didn't give it enough slack I'll use a heavier tool to get that braid out of there without destroying my needle Okay, so I've got it opened up. I can insert a finger in and I can start feeling which side of the braid it is. And as you can see, the tag end is starting to move in. Pull it all the way through. And now here's, here's the most important part of this. See how I've got all this outer core braid slacked up on there? Well, what I wanna do is make sure that I don't have any gap between my outer core on this side and my outer core on this side. So what I'm gonna do is for my loop end, I'm gonna go for my loop end, I'm gonna keep my fingers tight around it, and I'm gonna pull out any excess slack. Okay, and what that has done is that has pushed my outer core excess toward the center, and I wanna make sure that I don't have any gap between those two braids. As you can tell, they're almost flush, all right? So from once I got them almost flush like that, and I like where I want to have them, then what I'll do is from right here is where I'll start working my way back out each end. So I got that side, now I'm going to do this side, okay, and I'm going to do it a couple of times just because sometimes there's a little bit of extra on each side. So that has been how to do a reverse latch loop on your end. The reason why you want to do a reverse latch loop is so that way I can open up this loop as big as I want or as big as I was able to set my uh, loop in 
And since I did, you know, almost four foot, I can open this up to almost, obviously, or actually it'll be three foot, one and a half foot on each side. So now I can put my leader in and loop it through. But since I don't have one on hand right now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do, and so here's my leader. And I've got it all nice and coiled up, kind of small. Granted, this is a casting leader and not a big rig, but y'all will get the understanding of it. So what I'm gonna do is, there's several ways you can do this. One is a simple pull, pull your loop through and then pull your leader through. And this is just a simple overlap loop, okay? And it'll cinch down quite nicely once you take out all the outer core slack out of it and make your loop small again but i'm just showing you one way to to attach your leader without tying a knot and this knot will hold and is what we use on our big rigs down here in texas however there's other guys that like a little bit more of a knot there so what they do is what they call a tiger's paw or a cat's paw and what we can do is I'm gonna take my, my leader back through and I'm gonna start from the beginning. Okay, once I pull my loop through, I'm gonna loop it back over this way. And this is the whole reason for having a big old loop uh, toward the end. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab both loops and hold them together. And I'm gonna take my leader through once, get it all the way through, make sure it's all come through. That's one time and you notice I never let go of this. You don't ever want to let go of it because as soon as you do, you'll start binding up your knot. So there's one time. I'm going to go twice. And you can do it two or three times. Three times is preferred. And that's two. Making sure all my stuff has come through and it's all nice and neat. And then a third time. Okay, now here's where it gets a little complicated okay I can't just cinch down on my knot there because what I end up happening I'll have all this extra outer core slack that I need to push down so as I'm doing this I'm pulling my outer core and I'm taking up the slack and I'm pushing that outer core braid down my loop okay and make sure to always start from your knot connection right here and you're gonna move down as you're moving down you see how I'm, I'm pulling out the slack on it that's what you'll keep doing. You'll keep working it down until you get your loop small like you originally started. Okay, keep working it down. Nice and easy, there's no rush. Okay. And right here too, you can keep opening this up so that way it makes it easy for that line to move down and, and take up your outer core slack, okay? Okay. What I like to do is get the, the, the portion of the knot that's wrapped over and this one is the center of the knot on the right side and the knot on the left side because you can as you can see the wraps are kind of create a knot there okay so again I'm always you'll always see me go back to the back end and pull all the extra slack toward my knot okay Okay, so now that I've got it all the way down and nice and tight on my outer core, on my inner core, then I can go ahead and cinch it down. But at the same time, you don't want to do it real quick because you want to ensure that both sides are equally pulled. Okay, and this time where this is where some lubrication will help. Okay, so as I'm cinching it down, that's what creates the tiger paw knot. And if you look real close, it kind of looks like a paw print. And you can better see it when it's done with mono, but here, here in the braid, that's what, you're, that's what you're looking for. So that is 
your tiger paw knot. It's a great knot for your end connection when you're using braid. Okay, here is the other thing. When you're doing this to knot and you're done for the day, when you're done fishing, you want to get it undone while it's still nice and wet because when salt water dries up on this braid, it makes it a lot harder to deal with. It, that knot will kind of want to be stuck and you'll have to work at it a little bit. Now to undo this knot, okay, to undo this knot, you see this little crossover member right here, the one that's going straight across? That's the one you're gonna wanna reach for, okay? So once I get that one, I'm gonna start pulling it apart, and for me, wiggling it works pretty well. And as you see, I'm starting to undo the knot, and I'm gonna keep doing it. Keep wiggling it and opening it. And at the same time I'm opening that, I want to open my hollow core loop. And to, again, the only way to undo this loop is to open it from one side. You cannot pull from both sides. Okay, so I'm opening it up and you can see all the slack on the back side start to build up. Okay. Once I got it open to where I need it to be, I'm gonna open up my other loop. Just working it back and forth. Okay. Now here's the here's the part that gets gets a lot of people. Remember how we first inserted our leader, we went to one direction? Well, now you got to go the opposite direction. And the way to figure that out is to look at your lines. Just swivel. I'm going to look at the top end knot and as you can tell, you see which way it's already twisted. You can see which way it's twisted. So what we want to do is we want to undo those twists. So I'm going to hold on to my knot again, and I'm going to send my leader through to undo it. So that's one. Still holding on to it, make sure my swivel is right. I'm going to go two. And one more time. For three. Okay, once I've done the three, this knot should fall right apart. And there you go. That's how you do a tiger paw or cat's paw. And also, too, at, when you're done with tying up whatever you're going to tie up, go back again to your center point right here and then push it out. And what I mean by pushing it out is I'm keeping tension on these two fingers and pulling and moving my knot smaller again. Okay, so there you go. That is how a reverse latch loop will work for you when you're using your hollow core braids. So thanks again for watching. This is Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sertucci with a reverse latch needle and a loop end needle lesson on how to do the, the end of line knot so you don't have to tie any more knots. There you go.